Hello, in this video we're going to go over a shortlisted problem from IMO 2021. This is shortlisted problem A1, which means it was one of the problems that was proposed for International Math Olympiad, but it didn't quite make it to the International Math Olympiad. So the problem goes like this. Let n be an integer and let a be a subset of the set of z integers from 0 to 5 to the power of n consisting of 4n plus 2 numbers prove that there exists a, b, c in a such that a is less than b less than c and c plus 2a is greater than 3b. So let's just start with some ideas that I had for this problem. Let's discuss every single one of these ideas, see which one works, which one does not work. At this point, you may want to pause the video, think about the problem, and then come back and watch the rest of the video to see how I solve the problem and what ideas I try and what ideas work. So the first idea that I had was I thought about using induction because this is a statement depending on some positive integer n, so it makes, it makes sense to use induction. The second idea was, I don't really understand this inequality fully. So is there a way I can understand this inequality better so that I can get a better intuition into what that inequality actually tells me? And the way I dealt with that was to turn this inequality into something a bit more symmetric. So in other words, I subtracted B from both sides and I subtracted 2A also from both sides. That tells me C minus B is greater than 2 times B minus A, which means the difference between the larger two number must be more than twice the difference between the smaller two numbers. So now, Let's look at the inequality again. This give, gave me a little bit of a better intuition into what the problem is in fact asking. If you look at the inequality, that only depends on the gaps between A, B, C. In other words, if I increase A, B, C by 1 or 7 or some other integer, then the inequality does not change, which means we may assume that the set A is a subset of 5 to the power of n plus 1 consecutive integers. So this is nice because now if I change 0 to 1 and I start from 1 all the way to 5 to the power of n plus 1, that's the exact same statement. So I can use that freely. Next idea that I had was since the question is asking me to show that there exists ABC satisfying the certain inequality, proof by contradiction tells me that for every ABC, the inequality fails, which means the inequality is reversed for every single ABC. That gives me a whole bunch of inequalities and I can deal with that and hopefully I can get a contradiction. So let's get started with the induction. For n equals 1, the problem is obvious because it's a subset of 0 through 5 uh, with 6 elements and 0, 1, 4 is an example, so that does work. Let's look at the, the inductive step. Let's assume the statement is true for n and we want to prove for n plus 1. So in that case, we have 4n plus 6 integers between 0 and 5 to the power of n plus 1 and we want to prove that three of them satisfy the given inequality. Let's assume that 4n plus 2 minus x1, if x sub 4n plus 2 minus x1 is less than or equal to 5 to the power of n, then we can use the inductive step and then we are done. We can use the inductive hypothesis and then we are done. If it is not the case, then 4, x sub 4n plus 2 minus x1 is more than 5 to the power of n. Now I'm going to use that and show that the gap between the integers must be very large. In other words, the wide range that I have, which is 5 to the power of n plus 1, is not enough for me to fit all of those 4 n plus 6 integers in there. So I uh, use the contradiction at this point, and I assume that for every i, j, k between 1 and 4 n plus 6, we have x, k minus x, j is less than or equal to twice x, j minus x, i. And one thing that I assumed is that x1 is less than x2, less than x3, and so on. So I assume that this set is an increasing order. What that means is xj minus xi is at least xk minus xj over 2. So for example, if I apply this inequality to the integers 1, 4n plus 2, and 4n plus 3, so i is 1, j is 4n plus 2, and k is 4n plus 3, I get x sub 4n plus 3 minus x sub 4n plus 2 is less than or equal to twice 
x, x sub 4n plus 2 minus x sub 1. I know x sub 4n plus 2 minus x sub 1 is more than 5 to the power of n, so it means this is more than 2 times 5 to the power of n. This is not of any, any help because I have this quantity on the left is less than some quantity which is more than 2, two, two, two times 5 to the power of n. That doesn't really give me anything. At this point, I realized that I have to start from the larger terms, and that would give me the, that would flip the inequality, and that would be useful. So what I did now was to apply the same idea, except for start from the end, the largest value, x sub 4 n plus 6. If x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 5 is less than or equal to 5 to the power of n, then we are done by inductive hypothesis. So let's assume that x sub 4, 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 5 is more than 5 to the power of n. If that is the case, then I can write down the difference between x sub 5 and x sub 4 as more than or equal to half of x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 5, which would be more than 5 to the power of n minus over 2. So it means the difference between x5 and x4 is more than 5 over n over 2. You can similarly show that the difference between x4 and x3 is also more than x5 to the power of n over 2. But that ends up not being good enough. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the previous term. So I'm going to use the fact that x4 minus x3 is greater than or equal to x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 4, but I want replace that with 5 to the power of n, instead I'm going to use the previous inequalities, which is to say this is equal to x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 5 divided by 2 plus x sub 5 minus x sub 4 over 2. The first term x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 5 is more than 5 to the power of n, so I'll replace that with 5 to the power of n over 2, and the second one is more than 5 to the power of n over 2, so I replace that with 5 to the power of n over 4. And that gives me 3 times 5 to the power of n over 4. I'll repeat the same argument for x3 minus x2. That gives me greater than or equal to x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 3 over 2. Rewrite that as x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 4 over 2 plus x sub 4 minus x sub 3 over 2. Again, use the previous inequalities. We get 3 times 5 to the power of n over 4 plus 3 times 5 to the power of n over 8. Simplify and you get 9 times 5 to the power of n over 8. Similarly, we'll repeat the exact same thing. We get x2 minus x1 is greater than or equal to x sub 4n plus 6 minus x sub 2 over 2. I'll rewrite that as the difference between x4n plus 6 and x3 plus the difference between x3 and x2, all of that over 2. And using the previous inequalities, I would get 9 times 5 to the power of n over 8 plus 9 times 5 to the power of n over 16. Taking the common denominator gives me 27 5 to the power of n over 16. Which means, if I combine all of those inequalities, I would get x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 1 is some of these terms that I found, x sub 4 n plus 6 minus x sub 5 plus x sub 5 minus x sub 4 plus x sub 4 minus x sub 3 plus x sub 3 minus x sub 2, plus x2 minus x1. I showed that the first one is more than 5 to the power of n, the second one is more than 5 to the power of n over 2, the third one is more than 3 fourths of 5 to the power of n, the next one is more than 9 eighth of 5 to the power of n, and finally the last one is more than 27 sixteenth of 5 to the power of n. Taking the common denominator, you would get 5 to the power of n times 81 over 16. 81 over 16 is more than 5. It means this is more than 5 to the power of n plus 1. So what we showed is that the difference between the largest value in this set, x sub 4 n plus 6, and the smallest value x1 is more than 5 n plus 1, which means they cannot be in the set 0 all the way to 5 to the power of n plus 1. And that brings me to the end of this solution. If you like this video, I have a lot of videos like this on my channel, feel free to take a look at those. If you have any suggestions and problems, send me an email at mathcompetitioncoach at gmail.com and I will see you in another video.